Hello, my name is Madison with Discover Cleelum, and I am here with Charlene. Charlene, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, yes, it's <laughs> nice to have you here, Madison. Thank you. I'm Charlene Kozlerich, and I am a, a lifer resident of the Upper County. And where are we today in our special location? Well, we're at the historic Cleelum Telephone Museum. Charlene sits on the board of this museum and is heavily involved with the operations here. Um, tell me a little bit about how the museum has been over the last year and um, just a little bit of a background on the Telephone Museum. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, this past year with COVID has put a real monkey wrench into our operations. Uh, we normally are open Memorial Weekend to Labor Day weekend. And because of COVID and the fact that our hosts at the museum are all seniors, the seniors didn't feel uh, safe coming down to Dilson last mm -hmm. summer because of that. And so um, I came down when I could and we probably were only open 10 days during the summer. Uh, during that 10 days, we had like 123 visitors. So oh you my know, goodness. people are really interested in coming in, in here. And we're just right on the main drag. It's an easy place to access. So um, this year we're hoping to open and kind of get back to normal this <laughs> Memorial weekend and um, see if we can uh, stay open at least five or six days a week from noon to four up until Labor Day weekend. That's our normal routine. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, and can you tell me just a brief history on how this location started and just what you have here sure. in, yeah. in your building? Okay, well, uh, this building was built in 1923, uh, specifically for the telephone company. Uh, Clay Elm got its first phones in 1901 and um, at, at that time, in 1923, the operators were located up above the Umpqua State Building, up on the second floor, just at the end of the block. So when the building was completed, um, the gals moved into here and um, took up their reins on doing the switchboard operating. <laughs> All of the phone calls in this area had to be routed through the switchboard operators that worked here. So the operators worked 24 seven around the clock and um, they did that until 1966. And in 1966, by that time, the rotary dial, dial phone was in vogue. And we were the last in the West to switch over to the automatic dial. Cleelum. Yes. Wow. And at that time, it was September 66, um, the switchboard operators lost their jobs. No, all those women in the yes. workforce. <laughs> it was uh, really quite a, a change for Cleelum. And uh, so they lost their jobs, but Bell Telephone then turned this into a museum. And it's now the most complete telephone museum west of the Mississippi. And um, just a little background <laughs> on, on that. Margaret Carpenter was very instrumental in persuading Bell Telephone to turn this into a museum. And then once it was finished the next year, 1967, uh, she was able to um, bend their arm <laughs> and get them to donate the museum to the Historical Society, which she had founded the previous year. Wow. So it was her doings that got this telephone museum going. Yeah. And Margaret was daughter of Frank Carpenter, who built the, the bank at yes. the end of the block. Yes. So wow many thanks to her yes and it's still managed by the historical society yes yes so over 50 years we've been uh, opening this telephone museum we have displays here from 1876 uh, we have a replica of alexander graham bell's first patented telephone from 1876 wow. all the way up to the princess phone <laughs> of 1970 and then we have a few um, early cell phones, including uh, the brick, which was the first cell phone. And 
we've got tons of different telephones. We have an automatic rotary dial phone display, which um, kids these days have the biggest fun coming to dial because a lot of those people have never dialed a rotary phone before. Yeah. So it's uh, fun to take them back there and let them dial the phone <laughs> and hear it ring and talk on the phone. Yeah, very engaging and hands-on and fun for the whole family. Yes. Nice. And then we also have um, some coal mining dis uh, displays, some artifacts from the coal mines and from the old post office, uh, from the bank, a lot of early office equipment. Uh, yeah. One of the neat things is a teletype machine. And then, uh, because Margaret was from the bank, uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of the equipment came from the old bank, including copies of money that the bank used to print. They used to print their own money, which wow. I found amazing. Prior to the depression of 1929, um, banks could print their own money if they had enough gold to back it up. Wow. Of course, the depression changed all that. <laughs> I thought that was very interesting. We yeah. even have um, samples of Mount St. Helens ash that wow. came from the eruption in 1980. Wow. That, yeah, it's, there's a lot of history. Here. Yeah, yeah. And you had shown me a telephone that was used in the coal mines in Roslyn. Can you explain the differences between that and the other phones? Yeah. That was a very heavy telephone that was built so that it, there was no possibility of it sending out a shock or any kind of electric shock. Spark, yeah. Yeah, because um, they had to be so careful down in the mines not to set off anything that could cause an explosion. Wow. And um, so my uncle Steve Osmanovich uh, donated that phone to the museum many, many years ago. That Very was what he used down in the mines. So cool. Wow. Was there anything else you wanted to touch on or explain to travelers who will be passing through Cleelum or staying here? Well, um, one thing I didn't talk about is um, we have one unit of the original switchboard that was yes. used by the operators here. And I'm always happy to show visitors how the switchboard operators uh, routed the phone calls <laughs> yes. back in the days. That's always so interesting to folks. So as, at this point, you're going to be open Memorial Day through Labor Day 2021, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, keep us updated on how that goes. And thank you so much to you and the Historical Society for protecting this and keeping this and allowing it to be public for travelers to visit when they're in town. Well, that's our mission to preserve our local history and, uh, you know, make people aware of what our beginnings were. So it's very interesting. Stop by and visit. Yes, stop by. <laughs> and we don't charge any admission fee. We just um, um, hope people will donate a little bit to help us with our expenses. Absolutely. And we're also looking for members to join our historical society. <laughs> <laughs> and where can folks find you if they want to look at maybe your website or follow you on social media for more Kittitas County based history? Yes, uh, we have a Facebook page. Uh, it's a group for Northern Kittitas County Historical Society. Okay. And we have a website at NKC, Northern Kittitas County, nkcmuseums.org. Great. Okay. Make sure you follow them and like their Facebook page and check out their website for updates on their reopening. Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much, Charlene. <laughs>